In this video, we're gonna be talking about Google Ads, of course, and I'm gonna give you five different ways that you can improve your Google Ads, or five ways that you can look at your account and try to improve your ads. So let's dive in, and I'm gonna show you the first one here. So the first one I wanna show you here is this graph right here in front of us. It is super handy to use. We can uncheck these and we can start to visualize the data. So we could say, okay, when, how much have we been spending? And we can have it set to kind of scroll over and you can see right now it's doing quarters. It's gonna depend on the time that you have selected up here. If you have only 30 days, this is gonna be a daily chart. If you have it selected and you can see down here, you can change it. So I could change now weekly chart and you can see it's a little more volatile. But if you wanna kind of smooth out the data, you could say, okay, let's do monthly. We can look at it here. We can turn on conversion value over cost, which is return on ad spend. Or if you're a service business, you could have it here, cost over conversion. There's a ton you can do right here and we can have clicks turned on, impressions. We can select all these different metrics down here. There is a lot of metrics we can use. And if it's looking too crowded, you just turn different things off, turn things on, and you get a really good sense of what's happening in your account over time. And you can change the date period and really analyze it. Instead of looking at all the numbers here all the time, like this, and getting overwhelmed by what you see here, you can go to overview, and now you get a really good understanding of what's happening in your graph. Now, scrolling down, this is the next one here I wanted to go over because this is another overlooked section of Google Ads that is really actually a really handy section to be in because again, it, it displays things in a visual way and really simplifies what you're looking at. So I can come in here now and I can say, okay, let's look at the days. So we have the weekdays here. So we now can take a look and see that conversion value over cost and we can compare different dates. So we could say we are doing really well on Tuesday compared to Friday. Friday's not doing very well at all, why is that? So we can now come up here and switch it to cost and we could see, okay, we're not spending anymore on Friday, so why is Friday not working out for us? Maybe Friday just doesn't work out for the type of person that's searching on your website. In either case, you can now make decisions in your Google Ads to improve things. You come over here to hours and you can scan over and you can see now how much it's costing me at different times of the day. I could look here and we could say we're doing a service business, we could see cost per conversion. So this could be cost per phone call, depending on what conversions you're tracking. But you can see that, okay, it's costing me a lot more around five to 6 p.m. Uh, and it's costing me not a whole lot at 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. So maybe we wanna put a little more money into this time period over here. I'm not gonna get into how you can actually do that, but I'm showing you the different ways that you can actually look at the data to make it easier on yourself, because that's ultimately what you wanna do is you wanna make it easy, you wanna look at this data in simple ways. Again, going over this here, we can see that there's uh, devices over here and we can break these down in the same ways we could do over here. We can now break them down here and compare different things. So we could say, we wanna look at cost of conversion. So this is how much it's gonna cost per phone call or per sale in this case. And you can see that, okay, mobile cost me $123 every time we get a conversion, but it only cost me $25 on tablet and only $25 on, on computer. So you can see that maybe we wanna spend a little more on computer bids. We can even do the same thing with age and gender. But you can make decisions if you're seeing more spend on a certain gender, maybe a product appeals more to a male or more to a female, then you can skew how much you're spending on either one. We also have networks down here, which is another handy one. You're gonna find different graphs depending on where you're looking in your account. So if you go to a specific campaign, you're gonna see different graphs. So just keep an open mind on these graphs because they are very handy. I would go through them one by one and really get familiar with these graphs. And that way you can really break down your data without overwhelming yourself with all the numbers. Speaking of getting overwhelmed with numbers, let's break this information down. So let's say we have all this information here, you're looking at it, maybe you only have one campaign. So let's say we only have one campaign here just to simplify our lives. I filtered it um, and I could show you that feature here. I should show you that feature here. I'll do that right now. Um, this is a bonus tip. So this wasn't one of my tips I was gonna go over, but this here, if you check this off here in the campaign, so you check off one of your campaigns, you can go filter. It is the handiest tool ever. You can filter multiple campaigns and hit filter and it breaks it down. So now it's only showing you that one campaign. Super handy to have. But that's not what I wanted to show you. This is what I wanted to show you. So you see this segment button right here? This can be you hurt your best friend. This is a very, very helpful tool. So you could see this and we could say, okay, we have 26 all conversions. Well, 
what is an all conversion? Well, let's find out. So you go segment here and we come up here to conversions and we go to conversion action. Now watch what happens here. Now you can see we have parents first steps, sale made, we have conversions. So in this case, we didn't name them very well. You can see that it should be named something like purchase. Like this up here, it says sale made. That one's actually a bit better. It's kind of a weird way to write it, but it's it makes more sense. And this one down here doesn't really make as much sense, but I would call this purchase and it's probably going to be called purchase or add to cart or checkout or phone call. It's going to be descriptive. Likely you're going to see that these are kind of descriptive and it'll really help you. So if you're seeing five phone calls and you're also seeing five local actions, as they call it in Google ads, you might see local actions and stuff in here depending on how you have it set up. But you can now look at this and say, okay, well, that's good. We got five people that have looked for directions to our business and we had 10 phone calls. So it's really good information to be able to understand. And if you want to turn it off, you just go up here to none. But before we get out of this one, you have also a whole bunch of other things that we can go into. You can do click types, which is going to give you where people are clicking on your ad, whether it's the site links, the headlines, there's going to be devices here. We can break it down by devices again and really dive in deep. We have search partners so we can see if it's search partners or Google, where's our customers coming from? We have a lot of other stuff we can dive into. So you can play with this. I would suggest going over this and just play with these numbers here. You're not going to hurt anything by going through and segmenting things. You always come up here, segment and say none, and you're back to square one. Now let's switch gears a bit and talk about what you can actually do to improve things. And a lot of times I find people want to change everything all the time. So they see that recommendation, let's say a recommendation comes in to go to max conversions. They want to change the whole bidding strategy. Google says, this is what you should do. Well, I don't like to just jump and say, yeah, Google, you're right. Let's, let's do max conversions. I want to test it. So if I was going to test it, there's one area you can actually test this. You can come in here to experiments. So you're going to want to go to all campaigns. So I'd go back to all campaigns. Then I'm going to go to experiments and we can actually create an experiment in here, a custom experiment. So you come in here, click custom experiment. And now we have these experiments, but don't get overwhelmed. The one we want to focus on is going to be custom experiment. And that's going to be the one that's going to allow us to do this. So we continue here. Now you can name this experiment. So we can name it uh, bidding. We call it max conversion test. You want to name it something kind of descriptive so you understand what it's testing. And then you're going to select the campaign you want to test it against. So we could come in here, click on this one. And now we're testing against this one, which let's say it was on manual bidding before or max clicks before. And now we want to test it against a different bidding strategy. So we say can save and continue. Now we are at a point where we have to make changes. So you can see it says up here, this is the step. So set up, make changes. So we're at the step where we want to make changes. You can make any changes you want in this account. It's going to allow you to now test whatever you change here against the original. So I could come in here now. I can go to my campaign, click on my campaign. And let's say I want to go and change the settings. So I come up here, more details. There's settings here, so I could come and edit settings. And now you can see down here, we have bidding. So I can change the bidding. And I'm going to change this bidding strategy to, let's say, maximize conversions. That's what we were talking about. So let's do that one. Let's go save. So you can change it to whatever you want. But this is a good test. And I'll show you here how it works. So now we go schedule. And when we go to schedule, this is where it becomes interesting. We're going to have to set some kind of metric. So let's say we want to do conversions and increase. And now you get to set how much you want to spend on this new test. So if we want to test and we want to go 50-50, so this one's going to cost us 50% of our budget, then we can do 50-50. If we want to say we're just kind of dipping our toe in the waters a bit, we could go maybe 30% or maybe we want to try this uh, at a higher amount. But you're probably likely going to try this 50%, maybe give it half the budget, but Google's going to automatically split up the budget super handy. You can come in here and say create experiment and you are now good to go. And there will be an experiment. You'll see it running directly with your campaigns. I'm not going to create this one because we don't need to. So number four, let's go into the next one here, which is assets. So let's go under assets. And this one's going to be simpler, a little more self-explanatory. But if you've never been into assets, 
and you've just created headlines and descriptions, you want to go in here and you want to go through all these. So their business name. If you're a verified company, you can use business name and business logo. If you're not verified, you can actually go through the process and become a verified advertiser. It's not that difficult. So if you are a verified advertiser or you've went through the process, you can now use this business name and business logo. It just helps your ad stand out a little bit more. It's going to be for your search ad. You also have site links, which are super important. These are these texts down here. You can see that uh, these will show up down below your ad. And they're really handy, especially if you have multiple different services. I would probably have different site links for different services. Or if you had different products, you could put different products in there. Then you have the headlines description. I wouldn't worry about adjusting them in here. You have callouts. So I'll show you this one here. You can see the callouts, just something else that's gonna catch someone's eye. So this could be that you have free shipping, maybe that you have emergency services available for plumbing or something like that. It could be it could be anything. You can have these callouts. They're just to catch someone's eye. They're just added bonuses that Google Ads lets us put in there. And the more of these that you have in there, the better chance that someone's gonna see your ad over top of your competitors. Structured snippets. It's kind of a way that Google structures it so I could have a brand name here. So you can see there's different types here. We could have different brands. So if we had a whole bunch of different brands, we could list them like they have Nest, Nexus, Chromebook. We can list them different ways. There's courses. Uh, Google gives you some ideas here to kind of give you an understanding of what could be involved in these. You could have different destinations and we can list them out here. These aren't gonna be clickable, but they just add a little more to your ad and help things stand out. We have call extensions, which is very important for anyone with a service business because this is going to add a phone number. And you can see that there's a phone number here. You can now actually click on this phone number and it's going to go straight to your phone. It's a way for people to contact you before even going to your website. It's probably a very important one for anyone that has a service business, say a plumber or anything like that. You want to make sure that you have your phone number in here. There are some advanced features in here. We won't dive into that right now. Maybe that's for another video. Lead forms, I wouldn't suggest using this one for now. It can be handy, but you have to do some extra setup to get it to work properly. So avoid that one unless you really want to dive into how to set this up. So leads can actually get kind of lost with this one. So I wouldn't suggest using this one unless you're familiar with how to set it up. Locations, a handy one. I actually have a completely separate video. I'll leave a card about that one. If you want to learn how to add location, then we have price here. You can see that we could have different brands with different prices. You can have different qualifiers. So you could be from or up to, there's different ways you could have your pricing in here, but you'll see it shows up in these boxes below, really catches people's eye. So if you have multiple pricing tiers, it's probably worth adding them directly into here. And finally, we have promotions. So if you have, say, if you have a 10% off promotion running right now, this is what I would be adding. I'd be adding this in here and you can see it stands out, has this at the bottom here. We could have 10% off. We can do all kinds of different things in promotions, but it really helps to stand out. And if your competitor is not adding a promotion and you are, you might be the one that gets clicked because they see a discount and everyone loves a discount. So the next one we want to talk about is audiences. It's a pretty simple one you can add onto your search campaign. So let's take a look at it. So you come down here to campaigns, go to the campaign you want to edit, and then we're going to go to the audiences down here. It's audience, oops, audiences, keywords, and content. And then under that, it's audiences, click on that. And now you can see that there's these different audiences you can add in here. So we can come over here. If you don't see this here, you click on it. It's going to be, I, I can't remember exactly what it says here, but it's, uh, you click right around here and it's going to edit this audience and we can do this at the campaign level. I'd normally do it at the campaign level, but you can do it at the ad group level. And we can come in here. We can either search for things for one. We could search for, let's say we're searching for what they have here, infant and toddler feeding. So we go infant, toddler and see what comes up. So we could type in different keywords here and try to find what Google would suggest for this. So it even brings up dress shoes. I don't know how that's related to that, but we can come in here and we see there's different types of audiences. There's in market, which means someone is ready to buy. That's what Google believes that these people in this audience are ready to buy. If we come down here to these other audiences down here, Affinity, it means they have an interest in this. So women's media fans have an interest, swimming enthusiasts, pe people in that group are interested in swimming. So we have these different groups of people and we can add them in there. We can come in here to, oops, before I do that actually, if we don't put anything in here, this is what Google suggests. They're looking at your data and they're suggesting these ones probably work for you. So you could come in here and check these off. Also, before I get into anything further here, super important. If you're using audiences, make sure you are using observation. 
the recommended one. If you change the targeting, you're going to have weird things happen. And there is a purpose for targeting, but if you're not sure what that purpose is, then you're probably not doing it right. So make sure you're using observation. That's not going to change anything in your account. If you do it targeting, it will change things in your account and you don't want that right now. If we go to browse, you can also check and there's, you can see the affinity markets here. Uh, there's in market here. There is your data segment. So this is going to be your own website visitors. So you can see that there's website visitors, there's add to carts, there's going to be different ones in here. The all visitors is going to be a 30 day audience that you can add on. I would always suggest adding this one on because it's going to allow you to see what's happened with the people in the last 30 days. And then once you're done with this, once you've picked the audiences you want, you come here to say save. And these audiences are going to be automatically saved onto your account. As you see down here now, we have this all visitors here saved. And you want to add a whole bunch of these in because what you can do later on down the road, you can come in here and you can look at these numbers and we can actually adjust them. We can come in here to our bid adjustments. We could increase it by 30%. If we see that this, this bid adjustment is doing really well, we could increase that or this one's not doing that well, we could decrease it. So I know that I said five tips and yeah, it was only five tips, but there was a lot packed into those five tips. So I hope you got something out of it. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I will see you in the next video. Take care.